Hey, I'm David Liggett with Data Center Hawk. This is Hawk Talk 30, and I'm with Chief Revenue Officer Clint Hyden with QTS, and we're talking about the data center industry. Next. Hey, I'm David Liggett with Data Center Hawk. Focused on cloud location, data center industry trends, the dynamic market. Clint Hyden, yeah. thank you for uh, joining us, or thank you for letting yeah. me join you here in Dallas. Thanks for having me. Really appreciate it, and it's yeah. been a while since we've yeah. uh, we've been trying to do this for right, a while. Right, But we finally Quite made, some time. yeah, the calendars work. So uh, you're obviously the Chief Revenue Officer with QTS and yep. have been in the data center industry for a long time. One of the things I love to do for people that are listening and watching is um, have the people that we're talking to just go through their background. And it's, sure. obviously yours is very interesting. It's families involved, which is yeah. uh, part of your story. So just take us back to kind of your path to uh, into the industry and how you got to be the chief revenue officer at QTS. Yeah, okay, so I'll, I'll, go, I'll go back quite some time. Sure. Uh, so going back to school, uh, you know, I, I first asked my father, what should I try to study? And uh -huh. he said, computer information systems, do that. Sure. So that kind of got me into a technical path and I uh, uh, had started to think about um, doing some consulting at uh -huh. uh, Anderson or one of those and dad calls me up one day and he says there's a little Macintosh company doing TCP IP software. Um, you should think about talking to them. No revenue. Founded on a, uh, a Visa credit card and I became the fifth employee. Okay. Uh, we sold that business to PSINet, uh -huh. uh, went to UUNet, uh, uh, spent five, six years there, um, then did a couple fiber companies. Uh, fiber companies turned into a couple uh, data center companies. Sure. And, uh, you know, I was, uh, I had a bunch of friends mm -hmm. that had come to QTS and uh, I really respected the culture and sure. kind of the, the attitude of the powered by people and the yeah. fact that they really believe in that. Um, and I called up and I said, is, is it really true that mm -hmm. it, the culture is as good as I've heard? And they said, yeah. And um, so anyway, uh, talked to Chad Williams. It was the right timing. And, uh, you know, I've been here a year and a half now. Yeah. Well, talk about, um, you know, obviously your role is uh, focused on, you know, sales and, and yeah. efforts and bringing customers and users to the QTS portfolio, yeah. uh, which is quite large now. Uh, but, but let's talk about data center users today. Yeah. You know, one of the things that um, we certainly have seen is you know really a, a, a bifurcation in enterprise users and then some of the larger hyperscale sure. users that are in the market today. But what do you see as kind of the key differences between those two types of users today? Yeah, well, I, I think, you know, in general, um, there, there, there's a couple, and we, we serve both. Okay, uh, sure. And I, and, and I think where companies uh, uh, have the best strength is when they do serve both because mm -hmm. they, they go well together. Yeah. There are hyperscale uh, customers that order in uh, uh, very large uh, megawatt sizes, but they also have kind of these on-ramps that are very important to mm -hmm. clouds. And, you know, so there's different approaches for sales in terms of how you handle those two categories. Um, and then on the uh, enterprise side, it's more of a consistent level of sale mm -hmm. uh, and allows you to kind of have a, a less peaky uh, uh, market focus, uh, sure. which, which works for Wall Street a yeah. little bit better, right? Yeah. Um, and, and the thing that we're seeing actually in both of those uh, customer sets is they want to feel like, and, and I think this is the world in general now, they want to feel like that data center is theirs. Mm -hmm. They want to feel the visibility, the control. They want to feel as if they're owning it and operating yep. it. Um, but they know you've got better tools than sure. they do. Yep. Um, and they know you can do it more efficiently. Yeah. Um, so we have focused very much on innovation so that uh, you can go in. You, you know, it used to take a week to put in uh, a roster request and get a, a consultant or contractor added or uh, pick up a shipment or this or that, um, get a cross-connect order. Mm -hmm. Now, with, with, with uh, you know, a mobile device, you can yeah. simply order a cross-connect anywhere in the world. You yeah. can take it down. You can order a, a workload to a cloud. You can, you know, order another cabinet. You can t check your humidity, your, yeah. your, your density, your... You know, we have 3D renderings of your cage. You can go in, see the, you know, all the serial numbers, what's, uh, who, who, 
what roster has come in. Mm -hmm. um, so um, that the the big thing we're finding is, you know, there is no differentiator in cement and steel. Mm -hmm. And what people are wanting to see is, is is actually a company that cares. Sure. That also cares about sustainability because we use a lot of utility and resources. Yep. Um, and that cares about the fact that their business uh, is going to depend on on being a digital business yeah. in a, a couple years, if not already, yeah. and that we control them making it or not yeah. in a lot of cases. Yep. And uh, that's what they want from us. Yeah. Um, and and um, I think we do that better than anybody. Yeah, and that's one of the things, we actually did a, a podcast the other day on the data center user yeah. and some of the challenges that they have. And one of the things that we mentioned was you know, you've got to be able to pick a data center operator that you trust because yeah. you will be in the <clears throat> trenches with that company and they're yeah. there really to support, support your digital business. Yeah. Um, you know, you also mentioned the maturity of the market and how, you know, just now from your phone you can do certain things. Yeah. You know, I think back to kind of the mid-2000s when companies were still in enterprise users were still in the mode of, I'm going to own and operate my own data right, center. Right, right. Uh, the capital markets had their... You know, severe issue in 08, 09, yeah. uh, those companies really start looking to co-location operators whose businesses have become really mature yeah. and, and it really changed the market. Um, and, and one of the ways I think from a maturity perspective we've seen it grow is, is kind of in this hybrid uh, approach that a lot of companies yeah. have to either hybrid co-location or hybrid cloud. And it really talks about, I think, the flexibility users are looking sure. for today. Why do you feel like that's important for the customers that you all have and, and yeah. the people that you're talking to? You, you know, um, it's interesting because we've been talking about cloud forever, right? Yeah, sure. And, and data centers, and, and it's still a very, um, I think it, it's still something that many customers don't have their full strategy yeah. around. So yeah. to the extent that we can offer a customer flexibility around solution portability, yeah. it allows them to go in and say, okay, <clears throat> I don't know what I'm gonna need in five yeah. years, yep. but I know today I need 100, 100 racks in a X by X cage, uh, but I don't know how much of that I'm gonna port to the cloud over time, mm -hmm. uh, or vice versa, yeah. and we say, look, um, you don't have to worry about that with us. Yeah. We're gonna be your complete solution, and if you want to port 25% of your spend to a cloud offering, we'll convert that, we'll trim 25 of, of your, uh, your, your racks down and um, so that you don't have to have the answer today because we would almost argue that if you did have the answer today, it's, it's gonna change it's anyway. Certainly. It, it's always gonna be different. Yeah. And so yeah. we've tried to say, um, we know it's going to be different. We're not trying to lock you into something that uh, is not good for you. Yeah. Uh, and so to the extent that we can make it uh, flexible and portable, um, that's what you're going to get from us. Yeah. And, and our customers have reacted very well to that message. Yeah. It's, it's almost like, you know, data center users today have to make the best decision for for today yeah but also the best decision for tomorrow right right and and i think what at least we've seen uh, from our perspective is data center operators really changing their solutions to say hey what you have with us today we will be fl as flexible as we can to serve you you know one year from now three years right. from now when you acquire right. that company five years from now when you need to expand globally and those type of things so yeah, yeah. um and, and that's one of the things i wanted to talk to you about is just you know, as I mentioned, QTS has a very large U.S. portfolio, yeah, yeah. you know, in, in all the major markets and yeah. some different secondary markets. Um, and you've recently expanded internationally with some, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, recent announcements. But talk about just, uh, I think, from maybe a, a high level, just how this business is a global business now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, you know, specifically around growing where you're growing in yeah. Amsterdam. So we're, we're just north of Amsterdam, uh -huh. Emshaven and Groningen. Uh, but, you know, one of the things that you'll find, and, and, and um, one of my favorite charts uh, to show some of our own employees uh -huh. is the one that describes how international and global we are. Uh -huh. uh, because w when, when, you, when you think about us, you think, wow, you know, you've got 25 data centers yeah. in North America. Uh, but then when I show Hillsborough, Richmond, uh, Piscataway, 
Miami and Emshaven and the subsea cables sure. coming into those, we actually are the major. So if you think about the three largest cables that have just come yeah, in yeah. and newest and fastest, you've got Maria, Brusa, and um, Hofru. And we have landed all three of those cables. Mm -hmm. And so if you think about international connectivity, those are the new bridges uh, where data is being transported sure. uh, uh, across the globe. So, you know, you don't have to be in Europe to be mm -hmm. a massive European uh, 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 data center provider um, because they're all trying to get over sure. here as well. Sure. I mean, the, the globe has shrunk. And so we have a, I call it the connected data center. Mm -hmm. we, we have a strategy around getting every ASN number into our data center, every subsea cable, every IP player, every IX, um, anything that could be needed for the ecosystem uh, to uh, allow a company to exist digitally yeah. on a global level, we're gonna have in our in, in yeah. our data center. Yeah, and what are some of the differences that you see between you know, the, the, the US data center market as well as you know, the international markets? I mean, uh, you know, traditionally I feel like, I mean, the US obviously has a very large footprint from data yeah. center operators that are here. Um, obviously, that's similar in, in Europe, but it's growing. Uh, we're seeing, you know, additional growth in Asia PAC and other areas. But what do you see as kind of some of the key differences between those markets? So this is interesting. I, you know, let's take Amsterdam and, and Ashburn. Yeah. I, I think uh, uh, we're, in, we're in a time where we've hit these easy buttons. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, one of them is Ashburn. We just keep saying, hey, Put another data center in Ashburn. Mm -hmm. Well, there comes a point where you've got to port or import the power, the water from West Virginia, mm -hmm. from North Carolina, just to power that location. Mm -hmm. So why do we keep putting data centers in a location where all of the users are not, uh, data is meant to be digested by a, you know, a set mm -hmm. of eyeballs. Sure. So if 70% of the data is going through Ashburn, that to me says that 70% of the globe should live in Ashburn, <laughs> and it doesn't. Yeah. And so why do we keep stressing that region? Sure. And, and so one of the things that I found really unique and brave was recently Amsterdam said, yeah. we're gonna put a halt for a little bit, yeah. and we want the data center industry to come back and tell us, how are you going to effectively use our utilities? Mm -hmm. How are you going to help us replenish the water? Mm -hmm. How are you going to um, not take over our commercial real estate uh, scenario? And, and you know, we want, we want our city to be beautiful sure. and, and, and historic for tourism. Um, and, and if you've been to Ashburn, yeah. You know, that's not going to draw a lot of people that yeah. want to get, you know, you get the idea of Amsterdam doesn't want to become, you know, look like it has 50 bowling alleys sure. and power lines. They, 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 they want to make their money off of, you know, tourism yeah. and, and that kind of thing, as well as data centers. Yeah, so sure. they, so I, 30 percent of the data centers in Europe are in Amsterdam. And I, I thought it was very bold and very intriguing. Yeah that they took a step back and yeah. said, let's evaluate sure. this. And you know why that's good for the rest of the market? So we're up in Gron again. Um, and, and if you don't have to overburden a particular region, yeah. you get to spread out traffic. Yeah. You get to spread out grid utility. You get to spread out water usage. You get to spread the workforce out. You get to give another region a way to play in the economic development mm -hmm. uh, of the digital world. Yeah. Um, and so that's what we were trying to do with the Richmond NAP and, and getting uh, you know, a, an area to understand that you know, you've got the two fastest, largest cables in the world coming into Richmond yeah. from Europe and South America. You don't need to go to Ashburn yeah to turn back around pat, past Richmond again to get to way. Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't need to do it. Yeah. And, and, uh, and it's such a simple conversation, but people aren't thinking about that yeah. uh, because th the easy button is Ashburn, yeah. where we, we have a sure. lot of data center land and data centers ourselves. Yeah. 
But, you know, I think we've got to get to a point where we start diversifying yeah. more. Um, and I think Europe is going to beat us to that uh, punch in terms of how they think about the market approach. And, um, you know, uh, Grange Castle, a, a, a part of Dublin, uh -huh. uh, ran out of power two years ago, the mm -hmm. utility. And they ran out four years before they thought they were going to run out mm -hmm. because uh, all of the data centers picked that region. Yeah. And so it meant hospitals didn't have power, sure. homes didn't have yeah. power, and uh, uh, they weren't, uh, they are still uh, not on utility uh, power and uh, ended up having to pipe in gas mm -hmm. uh, from, you know, 50 miles away to, to run the data center uh, uh, industry in that, yeah. that, that area. Yeah. Um, so anyway, we, we've got to do a better job of not the data center industry and the, the, the digital economy is going to be a very important one. And we've got to make sure that we're, we're doing the right sure. things. Sure. Yeah. Right. And, and it's I, not just lip service anymore yeah. to say, let's go green. Yeah. You know, it, you really need to mean it. Yeah. And uh, because it's going to become important. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think especially, I mean, if you just look at the, the size of the industry and how it's yeah. grown in the last three to four <clears> years, and thinking about the the tax from a how how much infrastructure the mm -hmm. industry actually you know uses and it shows you know uh, a lot of times we'll get questions about hey c you can build data centers anywhere uh, it just you know it takes time and it takes money mm -hmm. and so um, but I think the industry to an extent you know needs to and is, is evaluating ways to spread out the infrastructure demand to mm -hmm. best meet the user and, and, and also solve some of the problems and challenges that the industry has, which is renewable energy and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Um, you know, one of the other things that we've seen users, at least in my opinion, really stress over the last two to three years is the importance of connectivity. And you talked about the subsea yeah, yeah. cables, but talk about just, you know, and I want to go back to that enterprise user, you yeah. know, and, and if you're listening and you're in this industry, you know, this might be, you know, a couple of cabinets to, a couple of megawatts, you know, yeah, or right. whatever the, the size might be. But um, talk about how important connectivity has become, yeah. especially as, as companies are relying like so heavily on yeah. this infrastructure to support their business. And I know that QTS has come out with different connectivity, yeah. um, you know, solutions for users. But talk about that and why it's so important. To yeah, them. I, I, I mean, that's uh, so I call it, you know, the connected data center because uh, versus the unconnected yeah. one. You know, 10 years ago, uh, banks would use a data center to uh, house data. You would go to a branch and say, hey, I need a, a PDF of the check that was, uh, to prove that I paid my utility sure. bill. They lost it. They, you know, uh, an employee would print it out and give you, you know, the, uh, the PDF of the, yeah. of the check. And that's what they use the data center for. Now, that same bank, if they don't have their uh, systems completely available to every user on a global basis, yeah. they will go out of business. Yeah. And it's, it's not uh, crazy anymore to think that uh, companies that don't become data companies, and data companies must be connected, uh, will cease to exist in mm -hmm. the future. I mean, I think a couple years ago, you think about stuff like that. Oh, a bank could go out of business if it doesn't, uh, you know, have a good online experience. Or McDonald's will go out of business if you can't order online. Those were catchy themes or things to say yeah. two years ago. Now you realize it's absolutely true. Sure. If you don't have uh, a, a digital capability, which means um, having the right connectivity, which means having diversity and diversification of where all of this data resides. Because part of having a connected data center is you don't want every bit going to Ashburn mm -hmm. just to get on the same fiber mm -hmm. and to be at risk of being, you know, uh, stopped or, mm -hmm. or cut or whatever. Um, you want things spread out. Yeah. So part of being connected is connect where you need to connect to versus sending everything where you don't need to send it, yeah. bottling it up, uh, and, and um, you know, giving an a inferior experience. Yeah. Um, 
And how do how do the end users today on like the, at the enterprise level view compliance? I mean, what's their mindset around uh, the compliance that obviously the data center would have, and it's a combination of what they're doing plus the data center together. But t but talk about that and how oh, important that is today. It has gone from the last five years. Uh, I've seen it go from you know measuring uh, door jam uh, width and and you know to, and, and that was what they were looking for, sure. fit and finish, yeah. to now it's, they know that they could be out of business if something happens to them sure. and their data. Yeah. And the, the idea of compliance in, in our uh, CISO uh, suite and, and uh, who we've got running it, I mean, we, we, we've got experts in cybersecurity that you know you would have used to have found uh, in, in working for the government sure. right that that are now in-house working on our stuff because it's become that important yeah yeah um, so it, it 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 has it has become one of the most important topics uh, and, and they will test you uh, in every possible way yeah. and especially when you get into the federal I uh, bet. business I bet which we've done very well with, yeah. um, but uh, they, they will test everything <laughs> you can think of. Well, let me shift gears for a little bit. You, you know, you've been in the industry now for uh, a long time and you know, you've had, you've got, you've had the opportunity to work with family. Yeah. Um, you know, now you're at a, you're at a company that, you know, prides itself on the people that work there. Yeah. Um, I'd love to, we talk a lot about business leadership mm -hmm. and just, uh, themes and, and maybe philosophies that have helped shape careers. And I always sure. think for the data center industry, it's really interesting to look at senior level leaders and get to just hear from their perspective, hey, these are the things that I've kind of clung to over the last yeah. 20 or 30 years of my career yeah. that have helped shape it. But, you know, when you think about the last however many years, what are the things that have helped shape you from a leadership perspective? Yeah, yeah. You know, here you are leading <clears throat> the, the revenue side for QTS, but what, what has yeah. helped shape you? Well, first of all, um, I, I think uh, you have to be willing to do whatever you ask somebody else to do, yeah. right? So there's some, there are basic things, and, uh, and, and I think people expect and, and want to see that. And when they see that, they can, they can start to respect and, and realize that you're, you're in this with them. Yeah. Um, but getting away from some of those basics, I'll, I'll never forget the conversation I had with my mom because I was, I was very worried about this topic. I was, uh, at uh, James Madison, okay, I sure. think I was uh, maybe a junior, uh, starting to think about having a profession, and I said, Mom, how will I ever be as successful as Dad? Um, hmm. I, I, and now he was in the military, uh -huh. you know, so I, but he, to me, he was the most successful sure. person. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to be like him, and I didn't know how I could ever accomplish that. And she looked at me and she said, um, you know, your dad is not you know, he's not the smartest guy in the room. He's not uh, going to be this guy, this guy, or this guy. There's one thing he is, though. He's the person that everybody wants to work for. Hmm. And she said, if you're the person who people want to work for, if you recognize that being that is the most important thing, you'll make it. Yeah. Um, so I have always realized that my success absolutely comes from those that uh, I work with yeah. and by making them successful and sure. helping them be successful, I focus on that versus focusing on my success yeah. because it always leads to the success of the company. Sure. And, and um, so I, I pride myself, you know, on, on that, uh, uh, you know, I've always uh, thought, you know, businesses are about people. Yeah. <clears throat> and so when I got here and saw the, the phrase powered by people, you know, it just, I, I felt like I'd kind of come to a place that got, a lot of people are like, nah, you know, it's powered by technology. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you got to realize the people made the technology. Sure. And if you don't treat the people right, you're going to have a bad business. Yeah. Because happy employees, they take better care of customers, they're funner to work with, yeah. they, they create better products, um, 
And, uh, you know, I just want to be at a place where uh, we have fun winning together, we're passionate, uh, we care enough to want to deliver the very best. Um, you know, I just gave a, a presentation to, to the Dallas office saying, you know, we are a lean machine of 600 employees and if we get those 600 going in the right direction, the same direction, all rowing together, you oh, yeah. won't be able to stop us. Yeah. Um, so that, that's kind of my number one uh, belief. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Well, I, uh, you know, I think those are just, that stuff is so valuable yeah. because that's really, I mean, you know, that's obviously your background and your story and, the, and it's been fun to sit with <laughs> others that have yeah. you know similar similar things or conversations they've had with parents or yeah. mentors that have really helped shape the way that they do business yeah. and the way you know the way that people like you are doing business is really shaping the data center industry and it's shaping yeah. the way that you know the digital infrastructure of the world is being run yeah. so i always love hearing those stories thanks for sharing that yeah yeah, yeah. um and thanks for letting us be here in dallas this has been a really yeah. fun discussion appreciate it excited to see what QTS will do the rest yeah. of the year and in the future. And uh, we appreciate the time. Yeah, thank you, Dave.